Look at this fancy handle. Just kidding. This is the last video in my AstroScan restoration series. In the first two videos, I showed you how to align the optics here on the front. This guy. And how to fix the primary mirror here at the back. This guy. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix everything else, including what many consider to be the Achilles heel of the Astro scans. And near the end, I'll show you a cool piece of trivia about the eyepieces that these originally shipped with. Welcome back to the Astronomy Garage. I'm your host, Reflector. The last main component that we have to talk about on the Astro Scan series is the focuser tube itself. It's definitely the weakest link in the Astro Scan system. Edmund Scientific put so much effort into their parabolic primary mirror and their pretty nice secondary mirror system that it seems insane that they would go so cheap on the focuser tube. Some have described it as a poorly thought out Crayford focuser, and well, it's definitely cheap. It's simply a thin steel tube with a sharp springy bit here that does two jobs. It grabs the eyepiece very sharply and it keeps the tube from falling into the telescope Fun fact, there's nothing to keep it from falling out of the telescope. Some people say that it does a third job, which is to scratch the heck out of your eyepiece barrels. So what's going on here with this? Well, let's take a closer look using my cutaway astro scan. The way it's supposed to work is very simple. Just like with any other telescope, you turn the focuser knob and the tube goes out, you turn it the other way, the tube goes in. And the mechanism is actually quite simple. Inside, there's a metal axle that goes from knob to knob, and on that axle is a piece of rubber hose. And that rubber hose is pushing on the tube, not enough to crush the tube, but enough to have friction to make it go in and out when we turn the focuser knob. And there are two things that go wrong with these focusers, and fortunately, they're both fairly easy to fix. The first is that that rubber hose gets old and brittle, or it gets old and hard and just doesn't cause enough friction. So you would replace that rubber hose. It's easy enough to do. You can go to any hardware store and you can buy either uh, food grade tubing or you can buy this, I think this is called medical grade tubing. Uh, but you can get that, I think, in a medical supply shop. A lot of hobby stores will have something like that. But this is very easy to take off. It just has a little set screw on each end and it uses a very small, regular flathead screwdriver. Pull that off. Now, when I pull this out, the rubber hose is going to fall off. So watch what happens when I pull this out. Oh, there's the rubber hose. So we have the axle and it has these serrations in it. And the tube just slides onto it like that. And this still has some tension in it. This one's actually okay. The problem with this telescope is actually something else. And we'll get to that in a minute. So the diameter here is about 12 millimeters. So when you go to the store, make sure you take this whole assembly and test it out on the tubes to make sure that you get the right one. You want it to be firmly on that axle, okay? So this is pretty good on this telescope, but yet the focuser tube is falling. Now we're gonna get into item number two that goes wrong. And on this particular telescope, it has everything to do with the hole right here. As you can see, it's no longer circular. It's, it's more oblong. So when we put the axle in, okay, so I got the rubber hose on. Okay, look how much play there is there. It's, it's been, it's oblong and there's, there's a huge gap there, like a, gosh, what, eighth of an inch there. And that's easy enough to fix, so let's do this. I just take a piece of popsicle stick. I'm just gonna cut a slice out. And I'm just gonna shove this into that gap. Let me put this back on. We'll see if this gets any tighter. Oh, that's much better. Look at that, that's not slipping, that's good. Yeah, that works really well. Uh, now in theory, I will glue that in with some super glue to make it permanent. But for now, that's a much more improved focuser tube contact. And if your telescope is actually missing the focuser tube, there is an eBay store called the AstroScan Man that sells replacement tubes that are identical in length. Here's one that I bought with my own money off of eBay. As you can see, it has a stop at the top and uh, it has a tightening screw, which is really nice. The original doesn't have that. It just has this really sharp springy bit. So we put this in there and it fits 
perfectly. I'll talk more about these replacement parts later on. If you've run into any focuser tube problems, please leave a comment down below. There is a third potential solution to the focuser tube problem, and this was shown to me by fellow YouTuber Joe Jaguar City Smartphone Astronomy. Check out his channel. What he did was saw off this entire pod up here and replace it with a third-party traditional rack and pinion focuser system. If you want to see how he did that, I'll put a link to his video down in the description box. The entire telescope glides around on this metal base. It has these three felt cushions here that make it glide pretty easily. But after 50 years, they've gotten pretty gunked up and they're pretty easy to replace. You can buy these circular ones at pretty much any hardware store. I've never been able to find red ones though. So if you find a source for red felt circles, please leave a comment down below. But it's pretty easy. Here are the felt tips. They're made by Scotch. It's a whole collection. Uh, these are the closest to them. So we'll get three of these. Step one is to make a little circle around here so you know where to put them. And then you just rip them off. I guess technically we didn't need to draw those circles, but I didn't know that at the time. Then you just put the cushions on. Try to center them up as best you can. Good as new. Look at that. If you remember the Edmund Scientific Catalog from the 70s, 80s, and 90s, then you remember that they made a ton of accessories that went with this telescope system. I'd like to show you some of them, a couple of them that you've probably never seen, but I am going to save one for the very end of this video. Oh, hey, how you doing? Yeah, it's just me and my official AstroScan carrying bag. Let me show you what this has in it. You're going to be surprised. It has an AstroScan with the base attached. Look at that. Pretty darn cool. Oh, hi, how you doing? I'm just going on a hike with my AstroScan strap. This was a really nice accessory. It attached to the quarter 20 threaded hole here and the quarter 20 threaded hole here. And, and it works pretty well. So you can take this with you if you're going on a night hike and you want to look at some stars. Look at this fancy handle. Just kidding. This is actually called the telescope bracket. It allows you to mount your AstroScan on almost any camera tripod. And I guess if you were careful, you could even mount it on an equatorial mount. This is an actual Edmund Scientific tripod, and it has a threaded rod at the top that you can put the base on. Let me show this to you. Step one is to just thread the base on be sure not to cross thread it. Then take your telescope, set it in the cradle, and it works. Oh, works pretty well, actually. Can you guess what that is? The AstroScan is a relatively low magnification telescope, but you still need to point it somewhere in the sky, right? Well, Edmund Scientific started shipping it with this viewfinder. It has a big hole right there and a little hole at the back end. And again, it is just sheet metal. It's pretty, pretty sharp, actually. And it's held on with this accessory bolt right there. It just comes off. To do some fine tuning, you could literally just bend it. It's just sheet metal. It did ship with a little cozy rubber piece that went over this part back here so that when people with glasses were looking through it, it didn't scratch the lenses. I'm sure that's something they got from feedback from users. Let's talk about the RKE eyepieces. If you were fortunate enough to be around in the 1970s and 1980s and you bought the whole set of RKE eyepieces, it came in this case, and it would open up and it would have all the eyepieces here with a nice barlow there. Unfortunately, this foam has fallen apart. It literally falls apart like sand in your hand, so I don't use this anymore. I've already had to clean all the eyepieces once. So I keep this around for nostalgia reasons, but let me show you what I do keep this in. We'll go ahead and open this up. Do a coating on there. First off, we have this two and a half inch Barlow. Look at that. This one happens to be in pristine shape. I don't really use this one very much, but this is the RKE two and a half X Barlow. And the eyepieces here, they go from 
28 millimeter. This is the one that's probably most famous. Because of the cuts and the angles here, this has sort of a levitating effect. It's a weird effect. I'll probably do a video on this alone sometime. But we've got the 28, we've got the 21 and a half millimeter, we've got the 15 millimeter, the 12 millimeter, and we've got the itty bitty eight millimeter. Look at that. Needless to say, the one that I use the most is the 28 millimeter because of that interesting effect. So we'll put this back on. Move that over here. There is another Barlow though. This was the two to three X Barlow sold by Enman Scientific. If you've never seen one that has a variable strength, they work kind of weird. I've had one by Orion. In fact, I did a whole video on the Orion version of this, and I'll put a link to that down in the description box. But the whole lens assembly really slides in and out to a couple of extents. On the Orion, the instructions were to, you literally bang it against your palm to make it slide this way and turn around and bang it that way to get it to slide to the extent. And that's how you got two to three X magnification on the Barlow. <laughs> If you're missing parts such as the springs that hold in the secondary mirror assembly or the primary mirror, don't worry, you can always 3D print those parts using the STL files from Thingiverse. I'll put a link to them in the description box. You can download them for free. But if you're missing something more substantial like a focuser tube or the viewfinder itself or even the accessory knob or some other things, well, I found a great resource on eBay. It's a store called Astro Scan Man and you can get all kinds of parts for this, some of which I didn't even know existed. Now, I'm not getting paid to say this. I bought all of these parts with my own money. Here's the replacement focuser tube that I showed earlier. The 3D prints, by the way, are fantastic from this company. Here are the accessory knobs. Actually, I lied. One of these is the original and one of them is the 3D printed one. In fact, I'm using one of his right now. It's holding the viewfinder on. In fact, you can get a viewfinder from his eBay store if you want. Uh, a couple other things. I got a dew shield. Look at that. It has felt on the inside, so it actually is a real nice tight fit. And if you want help with focusing, especially if you're doing any kind of astrophotography with this, here's a bat knob mask. All right. Again, I'll put a link to his eBay store down in the description box. I don't get a commission for saying that, it's just a great resource. If you have one of these and it's just gathering dust and you don't plan to use it, uh, please consider restoring it using the guidance that I've shared in all of these videos and donating it to your local public library or school. There's a lot of libraries out there that will actually rent these out like a book. My oldest AstroScan came with this one and an eighth inch eyepiece. It looks eerily similar to the Edmund Scientific RKE eyepieces that later shipped with the AstroScan. When the AstroScan first started out, though, this is the, one of the original eyepieces that it came with. Now, their choice of font is terrible because it looks like it actually says 11 eighths, which makes no sense. But rest assured, it is meant to be inch and an eighth, which works out to be just slightly more than 28 millimeters. Go figure. This restoration series has been a blast and I hope you've had a lot of fun learning how you can fix this up. I've tried to share all the information that I know for bringing this amazing telescope into the 21st century and getting it to last another 50 years. You may be interested in these videos over here as well. Thanks for watching and clear skies, everybody. By the way, it's over 100 degrees here in the astronomy garage and my camera keeps overheating and shutting off.